On today's episode, I've got three finished objects, one of which is going to be completely brand new to you, and it's the one that I'm wearing. And I've got a few updates on my whips. I am down to only two, and one has not been on this podcast for almost four months, so I am excited to dust that off and share it with you today to show the very, very little bit of progress that I have. So let's go ahead and get started because I've got a lot to cover today. Welcome everyone to Good Knits. For those that are new here, I'm Sherry and I am a Canadian expat originally from Calgary, Alberta, and I've been living for the last seven years in Amsterdam with my husband. Just a quick thing that I want to touch on before getting into the knitting content and I'll keep this short because I don't want it to be a downer of an episode. But as I just said, I'm originally from Alberta and if you've been here for a while, you probably remember that I said my dad lives in Jasper, Alberta and you might have heard that recently fires went through Jasper and actually fires are still burning there and the community is still at risk but the fire actually went through the town and unfortunately my dad's house burned down in that along with many other residents of the community being impacted so everybody's currently displaced i know that there's a lot going on in the world right now and i don't want to bring more bad news to things but if you've ever been to jasper or if you ever have any intention of visiting jasper please help the community rebuild and consider donating to the Jasper Fire Relief Fund. Every little bit helps. 100% of the proceeds will go to the community itself and will be distributed based on where the need is. But there's many people that live and work in Jasper and currently have no way to go back to town, no way to make a living right now. My family uh, is very fortunate. My dad is retired and my brother is able to operate his company out of Calgary but a lot of people in the community don't have the same to say. So if you are able to send even just a little bit to the community, because it really is a loss for Jasper people in general, but also I would say Canada as a whole, Jasper is one of the most beautiful places in the world. And it's just been really hard to watch um, what's been happening there. Now that we've got that out of the way, I wanted to just go ahead and get into the knitting content today. There is a lot to share. As I mentioned, I have three finished objects, which it's been quite a while since I've had so much to share, and I also have progress on my whips. I figured I'm gonna start with my Farnham tee as opposed to my Sabai, and then I will change tops so that it's a little bit easier for me to talk about. So, this is my Farnham tee and it is by Sophie from the Knit Pearl Girl. I knit this in a size C, which is the third size, and I made it on four and a half millimeter needles. So I had just started this uh, the last podcast, so roughly two and a half weeks ago. I believe I had joined in the round already and I was making pretty quick progress. In the end, this took me about three weeks to make and I'm really, really happy with it. So this is knit in Sadness Garn Line Olive Green 9062, and the color kit is the contrast color here, and that's in 1015. So my first two finished objects are gonna have a bit of a theme, which is this idea of not gauge swatching. <laughs> So when I started this, I was just really anxious to get going. I wanted to cast it on. I did not want to waste time gauge swatching. And since I had made a Thea tee also in this yarn before, and I went back and checked and saw that I made that on four and a half millimeter needles after gauge swatching, I decided to just go ahead and cast this on. And that worked pretty well for me on this one. Um, my pre-gauge or pre-blocked gauge was 20 by 29 stitches. So I was a little bit worried that with blocking, this would stretch out quite a bit and be way too big, but that didn't happen. My post-block gauge ended up being 19 and a half by still 29. And that was because I really intentionally did not stretch this when I was blocking. I just really laid it flat. Tried to just get out this line here so that 
It looked a little bit cleaner. I don't think it worked as well as I would have liked it to. In this case, knot swatching did seem to work out for me. I ended up getting pretty close to gauge on this. The linen really doesn't, or the line doesn't really grow a lot in blocking. The pattern measurements for this piece were meant to be 105 uh, bust circumference and 49.25 length. I ended up post block at 110 centimeters width, so it did grow in circumference and only 48 centimeters in length. So I actually ended up blocking it out to be a bit wider, but then I lost some of the length in the body. And so I think this is a little bit looser than maybe I would like it to be. I might try reblocking it and see if I can just stretch it out a little bit, especially knowing that the gauge is fine now. But I wore it yesterday and I'm actually quite happy with the overall fit. I bought six balls of the olive green color for this and I actually only ended up using four. So I've, I did end up going into the fifth ball, but when I measure all my scraps, I do have exactly two balls of yarn left. And I used almost the entire contrast color, the 1015. So I used 0.88 of that ball. So overall, I did talk about uh, kind of the construction method of this top in the last episode, but if you didn't watch that, basically you end up casting on the back piece here, you do some short rows back and forth, and then you cast on the shoulders while at the same time, and I'm gonna take this off the hanger, while at the same time adding in the colors so that you get this nice V point on the shoulder. So it was actually quite a tricky piece to get started. I ended up messing up the short rows the first time because I misread the pattern or misinterpreted it because it wasn't how I was used to reading it. But then once I got through that, it went quite smooth. Actually, the top part went quite quickly. I had it done in three days, and then it was just a matter of working the repeat of main color, contrast color, uh, and then casting off with the Italian bind off after some twisted rib. So this was not an overly complex pattern. I think Sophie writes very clearly. There's a lot of helpful tutorials. So if you are a newer knitter and you're looking for a designer that can really cater to helping you evolve your skills and try new things, I would suggest Sophie's patterns because I think she writes very clearly and she will really guide you through all those steps. She also includes some of her own tutorial videos. So I've read a few of her patterns now and I would say that's a pretty common theme of hers. So she's a great designer if you are a brand new knitter or an adventurous beginner. And in general, she just has good patterns, but especially if that's uh, kind of your skill level, then I would say she's a great one to check out. The sleeves I think are a little bit tighter than I would like them to be. I might go in and re-block and try to just stretch them out a little bit so I get a tiny bit more width. They are quite tight to my arm right now, but I think a lot of that has to do with the twisted rib here. I always find it does work out to be a little bit tighter. And especially on the neckline, this is a little bit of a tight squeeze to get over my head. If I had done the bind off any tighter, I don't think I would have been able to. So just something to be aware of, be very careful with how loosely you bind off to make sure that this will actually fit over your head and you're not gonna need to go back and rip it out. Another thing that I did not mention last episode is I attempted to do jogless joins which I know they're recommended in the pattern. That's kind of the method that she says to use. However, when you only have two rows of the contrast color, you can see it doesn't work out perfectly. I think it's more of a method if you are really using, um, or if you're really doing bigger rows. But overall, I think it looks okay. It could be worse. If I hadn't done the jogless join, probably would have yeah, not looked as tidy as it does. 
And really all that means is you knit one row normally and then on the second pass, you just slip that first stitch purl wise and then continue along. So a really easy method to do. You will also see because I carried the yarn up, I do have this bit of a line, which I know is pretty normal. I've heard other people say that in color work. I don't know if there's a great way to avoid that without doing a different color change method like helical knitting, but I don't even know if that's possible here. I've never done it before. So that is the Farnham tee and yeah, I think it's not gonna be a piece that I probably wear a ton just simply based on the color palette. I think it's a little bit more colorful sometimes than I would typically wear for a t-shirt, but I do think this has a place in my wardrobe and wearing it yesterday on a very hot day here in Amsterdam, it was really comfortable. So I think this cotton linen Lyocell blend is quite nice. Okay. I'm gonna do a quick change to put the t-shirt on so that I can hold up the top and we will go from there. Okay. Quick costume change. Now you can actually see this on me as well. And let's talk about the Sabai top. So this is a pattern by Suzanne Muller or Paula Strict. And definitely I am becoming a huge fangirl of her patterns. I have a ton on my list to still make. This is I think the third pattern now that I've made by her. And this was something that I cast on right as I finished my Farnham tee. I wanted just another mindless in the round knit, especially to knit while I was watching uh, the artistic gymnastics for the Olympics. I just wanted something simple that I could pay attention to what I was watching. So I cast this on without gauge swatching and I cast it on before I had actually blocked my Farnham tee. So we'll get into the gauge in a minute, but I knit this in a size small. It is the Sabai top number two. So the one without the ribbing, you can see it's just the um, simple cast on edge here. And then at the bottom, I'll talk about that in a second as well. And it has these really nice arm details. So you're doing a bit of a edge stitch here. I really like how clean it looks and this is knit in the brick red color from the Cecilia yarn by Svarta Foret and it is the exact composition as the Sadness Line. 53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen. So this is you know, the yarn. And I still have a full ball left of that. Again, we'll mention that in a second. This was interesting because I opted not to gauge swatch and because my gauge was already 20 stitches on the Farnham T and this had the exact same gauge of 20 by 28. I was like, oh, well surely that's gonna grow in blocking. And I found the fabric here quite a bit looser so looks a little bit drapier and I kind of wanted this one to be a slightly denser fabric so I decided to go down to a four millimeter needle on this also partly because I was using the four and a half millimeter for my Brady Loop cardigan so I was like I'm just gonna use four millimeter on this I'm pretty sure it'll be fine I did measure the gauge while I was still working flat and I was at 21 stitches by, I don't know, I don't think I measured rows. So I figured I was going fine. I got the flat pieces done. So you basically, you cast on in the round to do the raglan kind of increases here for the shoulders and then you split front and back, you work your way down and then you join again in the round at the underarm. And when I got to this end piece here, I was at the 21 centimeters that the pattern said. So I was like, okay, surely my row gauge is on then and I'm just gonna continue, this will be fine. It wasn't. <laughs> um, when I finished the piece and I measured my gauge, I was at, let's see, I was at 24 stitches. So four stitches more than I needed to be. So I was like, uh oh, okay, that's definitely not right. 
So then I blocked it. I stretched it out as much as I could. And my gauge now is 22 by 32. So I have two extra stitches widthwise and I have four extra stitches lengthwise, which means this did not end up on gauge or to the pattern measurements. So this was meant to be 91 centimeters bust circumference and 49 centimeters in length. And I ended up with 86 centimeters circumference, which is closer to the extra small size and only 43 centimeters in length because when I stretched it out this way, obviously it shrunk a bit in the length. So at the moment, this is sitting a little bit smaller than I would like it to be. It's quite cropped for me. However, I can wear it, it seems, with most of my pants and there's just sometimes a tiny little bit of skin showing. It's not the worst thing in the world. I feel like because I have a whole extra ball of yarn, which is likely due to the fact that I wasn't on gauge, so that's why I have extra yarn left, I might just go in and add more length to this. It's not gonna take very long. I'm gonna wear it a few times, see how I feel. If I find I'm really pulling it down, then I will adjust that uh, so that I'm actually 100% happy with it. I did get a comment on the last video around this neckline and somebody else was knitting it and said they were having a tough time not getting it to fold. And in the pattern photos on, or project photos on Ravelry, that also seems to be the case. When I originally blocked this and took it off the blocking mats yesterday to wear, it actually was sitting pretty straight and I was like, oh, okay, took some photos, was pretty happy with it. But when I put it on today to film, I do notice now that this is curling quite a bit, which is a little bit annoying because on the back here, I have my end that I wove in and therefore it is like at risk of sticking out along the top. So maybe just be careful with that. If you knit the number two top of this, when you're weaving in your ends at the back there, maybe just weave it down so that you don't accidentally have that little bit that's popping up. I'll wear this at the back so you can't really see it, but um, that is a little bit annoying on this. And it's not the worst thing it's curling. I might go in and add a bit of an eye cord to the neckline just to see if that helps straighten it out a bit. But that's something to be aware of with the number two top. I also think even though the gauge didn't work out on this, I'm pretty happy with the overall fit. So I actually think if I was on gauge, I would end up having kind of a gaping bit of fabric here, which is what's happening on my Milady's top at the moment. As I wear that, it's starting to stretch out a bit more and I'm starting to notice that the fabric is pulling out. So. I'm actually happy that the width on this turned out the way it did because I think it fits me pretty much perfect. I also really like the density of this fabric compared to the Farnham tee since we're talking about the exact same yarn composition here. I prefer the way that this um, sabai top turned out. The only thing is then I probably do need to go in and adjust the length to correct for that gauge issue but that's a pretty minor thing to fix. So even though I didn't gauge swatch on this and I ignored all my best advice, which anytime I've talked about summer knits, I always encourage all of you to gauge swatch because it's really important. Remember to listen to that. I still believe it, but I think this was a little bit of a happy accident and it did work out okay for me. So I'm not mad about it. Um, the only modification I made to this is I didn't want to just do a standard bind off here because I don't really love the way that it looks. So I opted to do an I cord and I just did a two stitch one, which I did a two stitch I cord. And I actually think I could have done probably a three or four actually. Having seen it on my Cumulus T, I think I could have done more here. 
And so I knit the body on four millimeters and then I went down to a three and a half millimeter for the eye cord. Fits perfect. Also could have even gone to a three millimeter needle, done the four stitch eye cord and been a bit happier. So if I do go in and adjust the length on this, I think that is a modification that I'll make and then I'll be able to compare if I liked this version or the new one better. I also realized I just forgot to say how much my Farnham tea cost. So quick rewind. My Farnham tea used five balls of yarn in the end, four of the main color, the green, one ball of the contrast color, and it was $5.95 per ball. So the total cost for that project was $29.75. So really good price for it. And then let's talk about costs for this top. So I used four balls in the end and I bought five and the total cost was $6.34 per ball because I did have shipping on this since I ordered online. But for the most part, if you bought it in store, it's basically the exact same cost as the Sadness Garden Line. And this one costs $25.36. So two tops basically for less than 60 euros. I'm pretty happy with that. This was also a top where I wasn't completely happy with the color of the yarn when it showed up. It looked a little bit more deep orange on the pictures on the website. And when this color showed up, I was like, oh, okay, that's a lot. But as I was working on this, I really fell in love more and more with it. And after and trying it on, taking some pictures, I'm really happy with this color now. So that was a bit of a happy accident. Really worked out. I'm really sorry if there's construction noises going on in the background. It has been impossible to film a new podcast episode because the apartment uh, two floors down from us has been going through a massive renovation and there has been construction every day except for Sundays. And I'm away this weekend, so I can't film on Sunday. So please bear with me on that. Uh, I know it's probably a little bit annoying. I'm hoping it's not gonna be picked up too much here, but yeah, I can hear it. It's driving me crazy. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the yarn from my Farnham tea and my Sabai top because in the end, these two yarns are the exact same composition, exact same meterage, and I was actually gonna say in this video that I preferred this uh, Cecilia yarn because yeah, in general, I was finding the knitting experience to be quite positive on it, but I've changed my mind on that. <laughs> so with the Farnham, I honestly only had one ball that had a slight issue where the yarn, I think I have a picture to insert, the yarn was kind of fraying a little bit in one section. So there is a point on this tee where I have a th few threads that are um, sticking out. And also, I don't know if it's hay or what, and I don't see any pieces sticking out. But on this one, there are also these little like fibers, like little pieces of hay that seem to be embedded within the fabric. And when you try to pull them out, it tugs at the yarn and kind of, um, pulls it apart a little bit. So originally I was like, well, that's really annoying. And I wasn't experiencing that on this. I never had any of those little fibers. So I was thinking same price, exact same yarn for the most part. I was actually gonna say I preferred this, but I have changed my mind. So the first ball of this, I ended up with a whole bunch of basically what's happening here, which is exactly how this came. I have not pulled this out. You can also see another one here. So there's all these knots. And as I was working on my first ball, I kept getting this issue where the yarn just kept tangling together and then I'd have to go in and try to pull it apart. So that only happened on one ball that I was working with and then this one, which is why I left this ball to the very end. But then what was also happening with this is two of the four balls ended up having the knots where clearly they've put the, um, or joined the yarn together halfway through. And that's super annoying because then 
on this type of top in this yarn, I find you really don't want to just knit through that because you can tell that there is a join there. So then I have to cut and rejoin, which leaves me with more ends that I have to weave in. So that was super annoying. And then the other thing that kept happening is this one was also ending up with those little bit of fraying bits. So in the end, I would say if you're gonna spend the money, I would stick with the Sadness Garn Line. I do like some of the color options here, but this brand also has a ton of options and way less hassle for the price. So I didn't have a single ball of this that had a join in the middle, not to say it wouldn't happen, but I mean, 50% of the balls on this one had a knot and two of them had just general issues with yarn tangles. And I don't understand why that's happening, but didn't experience it at all over here. So that's just maybe something to be mindful of. I really wanna try the drop spell next time, which is also the same as these two and see how they compare. So that's just something for you to know if you're thinking about knitting with these. There you go. Some honest feedback from me based on my experience. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave my Barnum tee on. Finished object number three is something that I've been working on for a while and that is the Cumulus tee. So I cast this on beginning of June while I was still in Sicily and I just finished it, just took it off the blocking mat, actually right before this episode. It's still a tiny bit damp, but mostly done. And this is basically the exact same as the Plum Rose Cumulus tee that I have. It's size small, this pattern is also by Petite Knit, and it is knit up on three millimeter needles. I don't have a ton to say on this. My gauge is correct, so basically everything is to pattern on this. The pattern measurements are 94 centimeters circumference by 52 centimeters length. I had mentioned that one issue I had with the Plum Rose version is I felt I knit the body a little bit too short, so I did measure as I went on this and tried to add a couple additional centimeters. My post block length on this is uh, 52 centimeters as the pattern calls for. My width is, or my circumference is currently about 90 centimeters, but I have a feeling what's gonna happen is I will wear this and probably it will grow a little bit width-wise, which means it will also shrink a tiny bit lengthwise. But at the moment, this is about three centimeters longer than my Plum Rose but my plum rose is also a little bit bigger and more to the pattern measurements. Overall, I think they both fit perfect. The color I'm really happy with on this. I am a little bit worried that as I wear it, especially if it's warm and if you're sweating, that the underarms on this are going to get a little bit ruined, but I'm gonna to try to be careful with that. The only other modifications I made here from my original are I used the 2.5 millimeter for the eye cord instead of a 2.75 millimeter needle. And I omitted all decreases from the eye cord um, bind off at the bottom and the sleeves. And I just tried them on before this episode to compare the two. And I'm very happy that I omitted those because I can feel even as I'm putting on the plum rose that the I can feel that there's decreases and it's a tiny bit tighter in the body and the sleeves. And I think this is just gonna wear a little bit nicer. It has a slightly looser, flowy feel to it. Not a huge difference, right? Cause there's not a ton of decreases in this piece, but yeah, I'm really, really happy with how this one is fitting so far, but I do need to really wear it out in the wild and I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So this is my Cumulus tee. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on the process of making it simply because there's a million other videos about the Cumulus tee out there. This is a pretty simple knit. 
So if you have a specific question on this, I'm happy to answer it, but I have put all my notes on Ravelry. Actually, for all these finished objects, I went in and added very detailed notes on everything. So if you have any questions, please go reference there. If I haven't answered one of your questions, just leave me a comment, send me a message, and I will make sure to get back to you with that. Uh, this took four balls of the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. This is knit in the color putty. I feel like I'm really all over the place with information today. Um, and I have 0.7 of a ball left for my fourth ball. So total cost on this was 36 euros and 30 cents. And I know that I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this. So money well spent, very happy with it. And Pure Silk remains one of my favorite uh, knitting yarns. One small thing that I did want to talk about is less to do with the cumulus tea and just in general, and I'm going to insert a picture of this. When people are doing the trick that Petite Knit has to avoid the holes in the underarm by picking up a couple extra stitches and then knitting them together on the first round, so it's the Kimmy, I forget her last name, whatever video Petite Knit always links to on her webpage, do any of you find that you always end up with like one side of that that still has quite a big hole in it? On the side that's the same as where I join the yarn, I always, always have a bigger hole than I would be expecting given the method of trying to avoid underarm holes. So it doesn't end up being a huge issue because with the yarn from that join, I can usually just go in and close it up. but. I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong or do all of you also have the issue where you end up with a slight hole there? It's still less than if you didn't do that trick, but yeah. I'm just wondering if it's a me thing or if it happens to everybody. And just as a quick reference, this is my Plum Rose Cumulus Tea, which I also just freshly blocked again so it's nice and clean. Uh, for summer because I've been wearing it a ton this season and it definitely needed a wash. Okay, moving along, let's talk about whips. So I don't have a ton of progress on this, but I am happy to report that my fancy Pepita skirt <laughs> is back in the whip pile officially. This is my test knit for Anne Catherine Stoll. I am knitting it in a size extra small and I am making it in the, um, <laughs> what is it? Lana Grossa Landlust Alpaca Merino 160. And this color is 405. And then I think this is 401 or 402. This is my contrast color, same yarn. Sorry, I didn't write it down, my bad. Um, but I did decide, okay, I'm ready to get back to the color work and the complexity of the pattern here. I think with just so much other stuff happening in life the last little bit, I haven't had the space or energy to really focus on this because I remember I actually thought I started this in May, but I started it all the way back in April. So it's just been sitting there waiting for me to come back to. I had finished, I'll show you. I had finished the first panel in three days when I first started it. So I had like a huge burst of energy, was really excited to work on this, got it all done and blocked. And the so this is the front panel of the skirt and then you do the exact same for the back panel then you knit the sides join them together and then knit the waistband so yeah i'd done this in three days was feeling really energized about it but then when i started on the second panel i had a couple times where basically every row i knit i had to go back and tink it and start over because i kept misreading forgetting my edge stitches um just miscounting the pattern and i was getting really frustrated so i put it aside with every intention of coming back to it right away and then that didn't happen and then time kept going by and i had other things i was more excited to work on and since really the need for test knitting this was more to understand the pattern and give feedback on the writing style and the charts i didn't feel huge pressure to finish this because she just needed it to be finalized for her uh, publisher to be able to publish, uh, 
her publisher to be able to send it to the company for her book to be print. So we didn't really need to finish and have all the photos posted because it wasn't being released on Ravelry. So yeah, this has been languishing in my whip pile and I am knitting this on four and a half millimeter needles, which is the same needles as my Brady Loop cardigan. So it's a bit of a pain because I only have one set of my Chow Goos. So I have to keep going back and forth. So I did decide to pick this back up the other day and mismarked where I was in the pattern. So then I did a row and was like, ooh, that doesn't seem right. Tanked back, also was just really struggling with okay, how do I hold the yarn again? And what does the dominant color mean? Because this is the first color work pattern I've ever done. In general, I had to read the pattern just so many times trying to get my mind back into what was happening here. So yeah, the first couple rows on this, I definitely tanked again and had to get my head around what was happening. But once I got into a rhythm, I was able to complete a pattern and a half of the repeats. And now I'm kind of ready to pick this back up and just finish it. So my plan is to finish the Brady Loop cardigan body. Then I'll be switching for the ribbing to the three and a half millimeter needles, I think. And then I can get back to the skirt and finish that before going back to the Brady Loop because also because my gauge was off for color work versus stockinette then the rest of the body of the skirt will be on four millimeter needles so i can just use the four and a half millimeter for the sleeves of the brady loop so that's the fancy pepita skirt if i have any advice for you it is try not to leave a complex color work project lingering too long if you're not as familiar with doing that kind of work because yeah, getting your head back into it and trying to figure out what you did the first time can be extremely challenging and frustrating. And I wish I had just kept going while I had the momentum. Okay, next whip is the Brady Loop cardigan. And this has had a ton of progress on it. So this is where I was last time I filmed. And I've done all of this. And by last measurement, I have roughly mm, three centimeters of the body left. So let me just throw it on. I haven't actually tried it on this week. And also trying to knit this one, it's really, really hot has been really disgusting. Okay. Oh yeah, so it's roughly the length of the Farnham T right now. And then a couple centimeters, so my hip bone is here. And then the ribbing. And yeah, I think actually it's in a pretty good place, so. I'm really excited to have this piece uh, in my wardrobe. So this is the Brady Loop cardigan by Other Loops. I'm knitting in a size small on the Assayer Jensen yarn in the color 2S. And the um, Assayer Soft Silk Mohair also in 2S. So I still don't know what buttons I'm gonna use for this. Uh, I'm just gonna need to go to the button store here in Amsterdam like I usually do and kind of place a bunch on. Oh my God. My yarn keeps getting stuck on the Velcro on my microphone, which is really, really annoying. Okay, wow, I am overheating. Whew. So I think we're supposed to have really nice weather here for the next few days. I don't think this is going to have a ton of progress on it because it's just way too big and heavy right now. Um, so I might move those needles actually to my Pepita skirt because I don't have a whole lot else to work on right now. I did order some more yarn for a new t-shirt project, which I'll talk about next time, but I added a random pattern to my summer knitting that wasn't originally planned for. So that is my Brady Loop cardigan. Overall, body's been going really smooth. I don't have much new to touch on since the last episode. 
I have done the final round of decreases on the body shaping and now it's literally just knitting straight down before the ribbing, finish the ribbing. Then I think I'll move on to the sleeves before doing the button band. And Ursula, one of the viewers who um, was also knitting the braid loop mentioned after I filmed the last podcast that it's actually not a double knit button band on this as I thought. I was a bit confused because she does say to do double knitting for the first two rounds. But after that, it's just ribbing back and forth and then adding in the four buttonholes. So it sounds complicated the way it's written, but I'm hoping it's not gonna be as bad as I think it will. I'm not looking forward to doing that part. Okay. Um, I don't really have a ton of acquisitions. I just wanna touch on one thing around the popopo, popopo. Okay, the popo jacket by Agio Knit. So this is the next thing that I'm going to cast on and I had mentioned in my summer knitting plans video that I originally bought, so this Lana Gato VIP luxury yarn in this beautiful color 13737. I am still obsessed with this, but I had planned to pair it with this Capard um, Garn Kid Seta in the color 240. And you can see quite orange in comparison, and I really wasn't sold on this. So I gave it more thought and decided I'm really not happy with this. I think it will pair better with an orange on a sweater in the winter. So I'm gonna hang on to this and I decided to go find new mohair. And I narrowed it down to two options. So one was the Phil Kalana Tilia yarn in color 373 and the other was the Assayer soft silk mohair in the color uh, 69. So this has been a bit of a journey. I was looking at the pictures and I decided the Sayer seemed a tiny bit too dark and the Tilia seemed to be more in line with what I was looking for. But then it showed up and it's just really too kind of light pink for me compared to this. So you can see a pretty drastic color difference, which is now going too far in the opposite direction from the Gepard. So then I ended up getting the Assayer, um, which is much closer. So then I went back to the drawing board. I decided to go back to the Assayer which was originally what my gut was telling me and I should have just followed it. So they're not 100% perfect, but this is much more in line with what I was wanting from that jacket. So I'm going to go with this color combo and now I have six balls of this sitting in my stash, which I'm gonna have to find a plan for. So. I see Moreka Knits um, released a new pattern, I think today actually. I forget what it's called. The Morella or something uh, sweater, which is entirely mohair. And I think I'm going to do two strands of this and another strand of maybe a darker plum kind of color and just make a mohair sweater. So this is a pretty color and I think it'll suit me. It's just not for that jacket itself. I am tired of talking and I think let's just go ahead and wrap this up. I do have a few additional plans to talk about, but I don't want to do it today. I will save that for a future episode. Thanks so much for joining today. Um, I know a lot of people are watching more and more on TV, which means likes and comments are kind of slowing down. So if you wouldn't mind just sparing a second, go ahead and like this video, I would really appreciate it. Also, if you can leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on any of the pieces I'm working on, that would be great. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, why not? Please go ahead and subscribe. I'm coming up on my one year anniversary at the end of August and I have a mini goal to hit 5,000 subscribers. And I'm actually much closer than I thought I would be. So I am currently around 4,500 and so 500 to go in the next month. So 
If you're not subscribed and you would like to stick around for more content, I post podcast episodes every two to three weeks and sprinkle in some additional content here and there. So thank you so much for joining today. I look forward to updating you on my progress uh, in an upcoming video. And at the end of the month, I will also be posting my latest wear test video to go through all the spring and summer knits that I've made in the last year and let you know how I'm feeling about them now that I've had a chance to actually wear them and put them to the test in the real world. So thanks again, and I will see you next time.